Got a busy night ahead of me, so thought we'd knock this out now. Harp on Sports, the bar podcast, audio media, or radio network. Follow, share, like, subscribe at Harp on Sports. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, Harp on Sports Facebook page. Harp on Sports, the YouTube channel. And I've got a date. How about this? Not like a date date. I'd be in a lot of trouble if I had one of those. But no, what I have is a date. Within a week, the new HarpOnSports.com will launch articles, blogs, videos. This thing's fantastic. We put a bunch of work into it. I'm going to let you know coming up in the next podcast to help me with all this. But the new HarpOnSports.com is going to be up and running for you in a week. All right. What do we have in store for you on this edition of Harp on Sports? A little coaches in crisis. John Gruden stepped right up as Urban Meyer passes the baton after six days to John Gruden. Going to look at that. Big Ten Bliss. Iowa and Penn State, there's a team that if they win, I don't see them losing until the Big Ten Championship game, if at all. At least in the regular season. So we're going to look at that as well. And also some NFL trade wins. We're, what, four games into the NFL season? A couple weeks here we have the trading deadline. Three players that I think could, should, and need to be traded. Start off first with this coaches in crisis thing. We have Urban Meyer. This is ugly and it's a mess. But right now we've kind of milked this cow. And we're waiting for the next thing to happen. The next thing to happen. And the next thing to happen is a football game on Sunday. Where they play the Titans, who own the Jaguars. They do. Titans own them. So if Derrick Henry goes into Jacksonville and rushes for buck 60 in two touchdowns and the Jags lose again, okay, then you've got the game in London. Then after that, you've got a bye, a London game against the Dolphins. And the Dolphins look, eh. So if the Dolphins dump the Jaguars in London, then this Jaguars team's going to be, what, 0-7? Then if you're going to make a change, there's where you make one. We'll see if this team rallies behind Urban Meyer. But Urban Meyer, when you're cooking on the stove, you got something on the front burner, and you put it on the back burner and set it to low heat. Urban Meyer's not on low heat. He's more like on medium heat, but it's no longer boiling. Why? John Gruden, step on up. John Gruden, an email comes out from 2011 in which John Gruden referred to DeMora Smith the head of the NFLPA, is having big old Michelin lips. Now, John Gruden has come out and already said he doesn't remember saying it, and he's not racist. Look at his 58-year track record. Okay, I, I, I believe you, I guess. The email was from 2011. A full, what, seven years before he'd become, six years before he'd become the head coach of the Raiders. So this happened before his current employment. Now, what he says is that he always refers to people who are liars, because he thought he was a liar, as having, back at the time, he doesn't believe so now, but as having rubber lips. And that's where rubber Michelin tires comes from. And people that lie have rubber lips. I, okay. I don't know. I do know this, that if the Davis family wants him out, here's their out. The Davis family played John, paid John Gruden what? $100 million over 10 years? He's in year four as head coach in Vegas? It's hard to believe he's been there four years. If the Davis family wants John Gruden out, here's their chance. You could go through clauses, conduct detrimental to the team, violating morality, whatever's in there, you can invoke all of those things. Because you've got an email in which a head coach refers to an African-American male as having big old Michelin lips, then guess what, gang? You, you've got an out. If the Raiders want it, will they stand by him? We'll see. Will the players stand by him? We'll see. I think it's interesting that coaches and accountability and accountability, that they tell players in the biggest stories of this NFL season, don't have anything to do with players and their accountability. And you can chug it up. It's like, well, the players are held accountable, but the coaches aren't. It, it's fascinating because we expect 22-year-old to 25-year-olds to be perfect, 30-year-olds to be perfect. And if they make a mistake, cut them. But if you cut them, then another team can pick them up right away. I'd cut him. I'd cut that guy. He's a nuisance. I'd cut him. Oh, well, we can pick him up. Look at Antonio Brown. Cut him. He's bad for you. Oh, immediately the slate's white clean, and now you're up again. I don't think that holds true for coaches, though. 
you think about it, if Gruden got fired, would he get a second chance somewhere in the NFL? I, I don't know how. Maybe coaches shouldn't get a second chance. There's a certain level of maturity that's expected out of this. In your 40s, in your 50s. These guys are both in their 50s. And again, it's not one of these things that in the privacy of your own home, what you do is your business. It's not true. If I, if I own a business and you're one of my employees and you're out drunk laying on a bar, you reflect me. You're my employee. People see the world through their own eyes. I get it. Because that's pretty much all we individually have. But you know that whole phrase, walk a mile in my shoes? Once you see things from the other side, and it's tough to do. It's tough to take a step back and go, what, what if I were in charge? How would I handle this? What would I do if I were in this position? And it's tough because it's easier said than done. But I look at it like this. I like what the Buffalo Bills financial agency did a couple years ago. That financial agency in Buffalo, they had a fan that tried to slide down the railing and fell off the upper deck and fell into the lower deck. Um, and they fired him. The Bills didn't. The agency that he worked for fired him and said, He's a financial advisor. Nobody's going to trust him as a financial advisor if he's doing stupid things like falling off the upper deck at football stadiums because he's drunk. If he's sliding down banisters, he can't represent us. Can't re How can he represent us? And the whole thing, well, what you do should be in the privacy of your home. Well, that wasn't in the privacy. It was out in public and people see it. And it's just, is it between he and his urban wire and his wife? Yes. This was an email that was intended for just one person. Should this remain quiet? Everybody has a closet. and Everybody has one or two pieces of baggage in there. We all do. Everybody does. Everybody does. But as these coaches, coaches hit crisis standpoint, Urban Meyer gets a breather today because of John Gruden. And the Raiders and John Gruden are just going to move to the forefront. Urban will come back around. When will Urban come back around? Depending on what happens on Sunday. If the Jaguars win and beat the Titans, is he out of the out of the in the clear? No, because they still have the Dolphins. They go to London and lose by two touchdowns. If somehow the Jaguars would win the next two games, would Urban be in the clear for a while? Yeah, that's always going to hang over him. That it's always going to hang over him. People that do ridiculous things and absurd things. Where are we with Urban in this situation? We're not quite where Tiger was Elon. But it's one of those things. Anytime you mention Tiger Woods, like, oh, that's right. Elon Nordegren, that's right. Will Urban, will this completely dominate his cycle for the rest of his life? The new cycle around him? No, it won't. But when you watch Tiger Woods and he makes a great comeback, look at Tiger Woods a couple years ago. He wins the Masters. We all fall in love with the day, and it was a great day for golf, and we forgot about Elon Nord Nordgren, right, and the, and the golf club and that Thanksgiving night. Kind of just buried that for a while. Like, oh, that's right. Why? Because he won. Because he won. John Gruden, is he going to survive this? I don't know. I'll tell you what, his excuse is beyond clever, and... Am I buying it? I don't know. I'm buying the creativity of it. Oh, yeah. I called the NFL Players Association president. Uh, I said he had big old Michelin lips. He's an African-American. Don't you think that's racist? No, no. I, what I meant by that is people that are liars tend to have rubber mouths and they, they have rubber gums and they are always bumping them. And, yeah, that, that's what I meant by that. Wait, what? 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 Okay, rubber mouth, rubber. Okay, Michelin, rubber tires. Okay. Boy, that's creative. If it's so creative, then it it's got to be true, right? Coaches in crisis. The coaching crisis carousel. Do, 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 do. Round and around and around. Who knows what we're going to get collegiately before the year's over. We got anything collegiately yet? We really haven't got anything collegiately yet. We'll get it. Of course we'll get it. We always do. Uh, so from that to this, a little Big Ten bliss for you. Iowa-Penn State this weekend. And you look at the Big Ten. The Big Ten, the East is loaded. The West is a one-man band. You thought this year the West would be what? Wisconsin, 
maybe Iowa, the, the conventional thing you do, Wisconsin, maybe Iowa. Who knows what we're going to see out of Minnesota? That was the thought process, right? Because you got Nebraska over there, and I, nobody really thought much of is it Purdue's over there. Nobody really thought much of anybody else in Illinois down the conga line. They didn't. But we knew we had Iowa, or we had Wisconsin, Iowa. Wisconsin, injuries, not as good as we thought. Lose to Notre Dame, lose to Penn State out of the gate. They fall down. So it's Iowa and Penn State this weekend, right? Three versus four. For everybody else in college football, you better be rooting like crazy that Penn State wins. SEC fans, Georgia, Alabama fans, you want to get two teams out of the SEC, you need to root like crazy for Penn State to win. Big 12 teams, you need to root like crazy for Penn State to win. Pac-12, Penn State. Cincinnati needs to be the biggest Penn State fan in the world. Here's why. Because if Iowa wins, Iowa won't play a ranked team again. You ready for this? Until maybe the Big Ten Championship game. Iowa-Penn State this weekend, this may be the last ranked team Iowa plays until the Big Ten Championship game. And we always fantasize and... Everybody falls in love with the match. Alabama won, Georgia two. Collision course for the SEC championship game. That may be true. And both of those teams will be favored in every game until then. If Iowa wins this weekend, they will be favored in every game until then. What on earth do you do if you have an undefeated Iowa and an undefeated Michigan going at it at the end of the year? Because Ohio State's already lost a game, right? Ohio State already has a loss on, under their belt. And Penn State will have a loss at that point because Iowa will have beaten them. Michigan hasn't lost yet. Michigan State hasn't lost yet either. The teams in the West will start knocking each other out. If one of them survives and is undefeated, we know for a fact that Penn, well, Penn State and Iowa can play again in the Big Ten Championship game, but one of them is going to have a loss. And if Penn State dumps Iowa and Iowa runs the slate, and then at the end of the year you have Penn State that's undefeated or Michigan that's undefeated and taking on one loss Iowa, then at that point, if Iowa wins, hey, they won, you can justify putting them in. The one thing you don't want if you're the SEC or anybody else or two undefeated Big Ten teams playing each other, just like if you are in the boat of, <laughs> if, if you are in the mindset or at least in the, in the shop of two SEC teams playing each other undefeated, we've seen that in the past, right? We're in an undefeated well, no, what we had was a one-loss Georgia dump, didn't we? Auburn, after Auburn had beaten Alabama, that's how you got two one-loss SEC teams in. You're not going to have a two-loss team win a conference over a one-loss team. It, we're too much into the conference season in the SEC here. The only time that could happen is there's technically a way that Ohio State with two losses, they could lose a game to, I don't know, Michigan at the end. And depending on how the tiebreakers go, you could have two loss Ohio State take on undefeated Iowa. And if Ohio State would beat them, oh boy, that... That's a different layer. But still, at this point, everybody in America that isn't a Big Ten fan or an Iowa fan needs Penn State to win. That way, the Big Ten championship game is an elimination game. If you have two undefeated Big Ten teams, if you have undefeated, imagine this for a second. You have undefeated Iowa and undefeated Michigan playing each other in the Big Ten championship game, and Iowa beats them by like a field goal, and you're looking around going, boy, this conference is the best conference in America. We had two undefeated teams play each other. What happened down there in the SEC? Well, Georgia and Alabama played, and Georgia beat them by a field goal. So we're going to put the same four teams in this again? Are we going to we just put these four in there? Well, we've got a one-loss Oregon team. Well, okay, what else do we have? We have undefeated Cincinnati. Oh. Okay, see how this can get tricky in a hurry? So, again, SEC fans, I guess Big Ten fans that aren't Iowa, Pac-12, Big 12, ACC, Wake Forest is undefeated too. Yeah, you get it. What do you do if... Iowa kicks a field goal to beat Michigan and Wake Forest is sitting there and they just won the lowly ACC and they're undefeated. See, if you want 
this thing to clean up a little bit. And I've always said, if you want chaos, root for as many undefeated teams as possible. How do you differentiate undefeated teams? Loss teams, you can compare losses. You're going to compare wins. Hey, we're 13-0. Well, we're 13-0. Well, we're 13-0. Yeah, but you play in the ACC. Yeah, so you play in the Big 12. You don't play anybody you're not. That's how you get there. So, I want... I'd like to see Iowa win just to make... I'd like to see an undefeated Big Ten clash. I'd like to see the Big Ten championship game mean something. And I, if I think Iowa... I think Cincinnati's not going to lose the rest of the year. Said last week the Notre Dame game was the, the hook. I think they're going to win them all. Cincinnati the rest of the year. I think if Iowa wins, they'll be undefeated until the Big Ten championship game. Oh, well, what else do we have? Oh, going to wrap up with this little NFL trade wins for you. The NFL trading deadline's coming up here in a couple weeks. And let's face it, the trading deadline is best in what sport? It's usually the best in baseball. Now, basketball definitely makes things interesting. Basketball seems to be more, we have more trades in basketball now than ever. Hockey, I guess it's okay, but football, the NFL, it's kind of just not a thing. However, there are a couple teams out there. If I'm looking around, I'm going to make things worth my while. I've got three trades. Three trades that I think should happen. Will they happen? No. Should they happen? Yes. They should. I'm going to go in reverse order just because trying to find spots and pieces for some of these guys can get interesting. So my very first guy on the block, I've got two receivers. My very first receiver is Brandon Crooks. Receiver, Houston. They're terrible, and they're not winning that division. They need draft picks, and they can get, well, I don't know, they get a third out of him? He's not going anywhere this year. It'll disappear at the end of next year. Is there somebody out there star for a receiver that could use a receiver? You bet there is. And Brandon Crooks, I, I look at that, and, you know, what he was able to do when he was on the West Coast, and where he is now and how he fits into these schemes. <laughs> he's he's never been in a place for a long time, but he's been pretty good everywhere he's been. So I look at a guy like that, and I think of a place like Cleveland. I think, and look, they already went out and they already made one move, didn't they? With Gilmore? I look like a place like Green Bay. Brennan Cook's going to Green Bay. And adding another piece to Aaron Rodgers' repertoire? Yeah. So that's the third guy in my trade wins list. Brennan Cooks, Houston, not doing anything down there. Second guy on my list, I'm going to give you another receiver, and that's Allen Robinson with the Bears. Allen Robinson is a legit wide receiver. He's a perennial pro bowler. He's a 1,300-yard guy in the right system. That dude's had, what, 3,400 yards the last three seasons in Chicago, 3,500 yards last three seasons in Chicago with who? His quarterback, Mitch Trubisky. And now he's got a mess on his hands. He's not going anywhere. This thing, team isn't going anywhere. And they paid him, what, $16 million this year? They brought him back under the franchise tag. They're not going to franchise him at $20 million next year. They're just not. So he's going to walk at the end of the year. There's a team, if I were, if, if I were where I was, I'd be all over him. If I were the Arizona Cardinals, I would dead sprint to try to get A-Rob. Could you imagine DeAndre Hopkins and Allen Robinson in Arizona with Kyler Murray? What are you going to do to take that next step in the NFC? You're looking around and the Rams are loaded. You know the Bucks are good. The Packers just made a move to shore up their defense. You look around and go, oh my gosh, the Packers are loaded. They're going to run away with that division. Boy, the NFC West. Uh, who knows what's going on with Russell Wilson, but we know the Cardinals are legit. We're, we know the Rams are good. Who else do we have that in the NFC that that we know is going to make a run before it's all said and done? Uh, the Cowboys are loaded. So the Cowboys, the Rams, the Bucks, the Packers. If I'm Arizona, I'm looking around going, we let, let's go get let's go get Allen Robinson. We go get Allen Robinson. We throw a Rob with DeAndre Hopkins in the postseason. We get home field. We're out here in the desert. Good luck stopping us. So that'd be my other one and my last one. You know, I look at teams that are going nowhere or teams that have a hole that they need to fill. And I've been thinking about this one. 
because he's not going to play this weekend. Even though he's had somewhat of an okay season, he's already destined to head to the junkyard. I think if I were the Detroit Lions, I'd trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. Going to rebuild this thing? It's hard for me to believe that Jimmy Garoppolo played in the Super Bowl less than two years ago. Was ahead in the Super Bowl in the fourth quarter less than two years ago. Last year he struggles. They draft Trey Lance. They're obviously moving on from him. Jimmy Garoppolo's, what, 30 now? He's 30? So if I were the Lions, I would. I pick up the phone and try to get Jimmy Garoppolo. I try to do if I were Detroit what Carolina did with Sam Darnold. I go get Jimmy Garoppolo, put him in Detroit, and then in the offseason I'd go get an uh, offensive wizard. I'd hire Joe Brady. Um I'd, I'd do something if I were Detroit. That's a mess, it's not gonna go anywhere with what they have now. Um <laughs> hitting people in the kneecaps. You need an offensive mind there. Uh, if I were them, I'd hire Eric Bienemy and he'd be my he'd run the He'd run the ship. I'd bring in Jimmy Garoppolo, and that's what I'd do if I were Detroit. So three guys, Brandon Cooks. Uh, I'd look at him trying Green Bay, maybe even Cleveland. Cleveland wants to take that next step at a guy like that. Number two on my list, Allen Robinson, Arizona, maybe even Cleveland. And then Jimmy Garoppolo, Detroit. Three NFL trades that I would like to see. I think makes sense. So there you go, Harp on Sports, the bar, podcast, audio, media, radio network. Follow, share, like, subscribe at Harp on Sports, Twitter at Harp on Sports, Instagram, harponsports.com. Seven days, less than a week. We're going to have that thing updated, fresh, and ready to roll for you. Just got to put a couple more finishing touches on it. You're really going to like it. And Harp on Sports, the YouTube channel. There you go. Remember, stay clean, stay focused, stay strong. Frankenstein, have fun with your friends.